quickly again i have given this presentation on the types of yoga in an elaborate detail in some other place i'm also going to uh, do it here on my youtube channel as and when uh, time permits but quickly the concept of yoga in the indian tradition is very important just the yoga it simply means a period of time a specific period of time with a, a well defined and sometimes not so well defined upper and lower bounds and when i describe these different types you will see what i mean by that this all these different types of yoga can be nicely beautifully and for uh, for our discussion uh, in a simplistic fashion somewhat simplistic fashion can be separated into four different buckets okay so the horizontal axis is the axis of time keeping there is a concept of yoga that is a psychological or physiological in nature and doesn't it has a sense of that time interval but it doesn't have anything to do with we using that yoga to measure a chronological time or even a theoretical time and i'll explain what i mean by that whereas there is also definitely a time keeping uh, type of yoga which we can call space time like our wall clock okay or a calendar that we use with the days and weeks and months and years and centuries and millenniums and so on okay that will fall on the right side i will explain why i have given these titles such as karma pradhan the emphasis on the work gnana pradhan the emphasis is on the information or knowledge and then the local contextual versus global and universal once i fill this uh, whole uh, bracket here let's begin understanding what is a philosophical yoga i can give you many examples just for the sake of brevity i'm going to take one or two examples in each category <clears throat> in a philosophical type of yoga which is what a psychological physiological in nature and also it has a global context universal context for example aitreya brahman that is panchika 7 <clears throat> has this to say about the yogas it says kali shayano bhavati sanji hanastu dwaparah uttishth streta bhavati krutam sampaddate charash it's a very psychological uh, philosophical definition it says when you are sleeping that is as if you are in a kali yuga when you wake up and still sitting you are in the uh, dwapar yuga when you get up when you stand up you are in the treta yuga and when you start walking in the sense of when you become busy in the activity useful activity uh, that's like walking then you are in the kruta yuga or satya yuga therefore stay in the satya yuga which means what keep yourself busy in good activity charayeti charayeti this has nothing to do we cannot use this unit to track the chronological time for history or anything else this is a interesting story that i recently heard at a, a conference on bhagavad gita that i was uh, participating in indonesia the decadence and unification of daivi and asuri pravrti and this was this story was told by one of the uh, military personnel from the indonesian army so i'll just repeat that story uh, he said when uh, in the satya yuga the daivi or devas and asuras the good and bad guys for simplicity they lived on different planets okay no communication between them life was good <laughs> good for both parties because there is no conflict when you come to uh, this is a metaphor by the way and i'll come to that when you come to the treta yuga the the devas and asuras were on the same planet but different places different countries so now remember treta yuga in thinking in terms of ramayana is that rama is in the ayodhya and ravana is in lanka when you come to dwapar yuga uh, he said the both devas and asuras or those uh, pravrttis those attitudes were there in one family but the two factions of the family so kauravas and pandavas right one is asuri one is daivi but in one family and he said when you come to the uh, uh, kali yuga guess what we don't have to go anywhere to find these both pravrttis both attitudes the daivi and asuri pravrttis are very much inside us they both are right here 
Now, this is a metaphorical story, okay? We are talking about the yugas. We are talking a philosophical concept. This gives us some insights, you know, how we should live our life and be aware of the good and bad inside us and so on. But again, this cannot be used for the tracking of time and so on. There is a, another definition from Charaka Samvita about your health, not just health as an individual, but the health of a society or health of human being as a species. I'm not going to go through that just to keep that in time here. But let's go to the next quadrant. This is a quadrant where, again, the definition is psychological or physiological in nature. But now the context is local. Okay, It's individual context, for example. Let's take this verse from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Shikshashtaka. There he is describing uh, the feeling of separation from his Aradya Daivat, Krishna. And he says, Yugayitam Nimeshena Chakshusha Pravrushayitam Shunyayitam Jagat Sarvam Govinda Virahenami. He says, a separation from Krishna, like separation, when I feel separation from Krishna, even for a flash of a second, Nimeshena, like blinking of an eye, Although it is only separation for that time, I feel like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, giving this, uh, his psychology, explaining his psychological state, that he feels as if there is a separation for a yuga, okay, which means for a very long time, but no specific number is intended here, okay. Now, in Jiva Goswami, in his commentary, he says, well, that yuga there Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is referring to is like 12 years. There are many types of even within the chronology, there are different durations of yuga. For example, one year can be a yuga, one year can be four yuga, five year can be a yuga, 12 year can be a yuga, 30 years can be a yuga, 60 years can be a yuga, 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, 12,000, 21,000, 26,000. These are these all can be the durations for an individual yuga or multiple yugas. But let's move on. Now, if we think of a very specific, important time period, we may call it a yuga. Actually, it has been called as a yuga, as such as like Ramayana as a yuga, Rama as a yuga purush, or Mahabharata as a yuga, and Krishna as a yuga purush. Guess what? The Each generation in an individual family, the word that is used is also yuga. So the yuga in my family, if I go back to my uh, few predecessors, Okay, that duration, it will be a fixed duration, like my father's time when he was the, uh, the head of the family, that can be considered my father's yuga. The point is that time wouldn't be exactly same for me or for my grandfather, and it won't be same for other family members or other families. So yes, it's a yuga, but it's a yuga of a different kind. We cannot assign a specific number, all right? Okay. There is also this very beautiful, important definition from Mahabharata. Very important. Raja Kalasya Karanam. It is repeated multiple times. And what does that mean? Actually, we, in this case, the Raja, the king, the administrator, or we as an influential individual, with our own behavior, own change of behavior, change of attitude, change of work, all the different right changes, we can change the type of yuga. It's a very optimistic scenario, okay? Raja Kalasya Karnam, a king by his own administration brings a certain type of yuga. That is what Mahabharata says. Mahabharata doesn't stop there. Mahabharata actually gives precise examples. For example, right inside the Mahabharata, uh, it says that when Bhishmacharya was ruling and uh, Dhritarashtra, Pandu and Vidur, they were very, very young. Bhishmacharya was ruling so effectively that he brought Satya Yuga, during the Mahabharata times when Bhishmacharya was ruling. So Satya Yuga in the Dwapar Yuga, don't forget that. The same Mahabharata refers to Parshuram when he uh, killed or uh, make sure that they go away. These, uh, these, uh, non, these badly behaving miscreants, Kshatriya races. He killed them 21 times supposedly. And every time the Mahabharata tells us by doing that action, Parshurama brought Satya Yuga okay, to, to the earth. And Parshurama's time is either seen as a Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga, and so on. In fact, Parshuram is there in all through the all the times. Okay, he's there in every yuga. Many, many Parshurams, just like many sages. Okay, it's not the same one individual we are talking. Now. This is a very optimistic scenario because we can change the type of yuga that we desire at the location we are living 
or if we have a power and we are we are doing something there is one more definition from charaka samhita it has to do with the infancy the youth the old age and then finally disease and death and they are seen as a satya yuga treta yuga dwapar yuga and kali yuga again the charaka samhita will tell you that look this is how the yugas are defined and actually depending on how you do the exercise how do you do your dinacharya rutucharya how you take nutrition you can change the yuga you can change the yuga for yourself in the lower case which is therefore it's a local contextual for yourself in the one above charak samhita from vimanastan you can change for the society or actually that's how it was based on the evolutionary forces as you go back in the past okay so that's let's go to the next one now theoretical uh, sense of yuga is to explain a complex concept a complex evolution using some simple concept for example if you look at the geological evolution there are different names given to it and it kind of ends with a pleistocene and a holocene which is like our current time okay these can be thought of as a different yugas and how long we have the history well the same as the history of the earth 4500 million years um this is for the geological landscape with the geological changes you also have a similar thing for biological changes 4500 million years of biological evolution on the earth possibly starting with the water singular like monocell uh, you know single cell whatever the species are called right uh, like amoeba and what not and then going to multicellular organisms uh, then the life coming from the ocean to the ground like uh, amphibians and then finally completely on the ground the reptiles and then the mammals birds and that evolution that can be explained through the biological yugas these are theoretical concepts to explain to comprehend the subject and to to be able to communicate uh, to to others okay and i'll give you example from the indian tradition for example What, these are two here one is the astronomy competition that i just described this is a 4.32 uh, million years of a uh, mahayuga and if it's divided as a 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 or total of like kali yuga will become what just a 10% that's 432000 it is a purely mathematical formulation to understand to comprehend to communicate effectively the precise and accurate orbital periods of the planets of the grahas has absolutely nothing to do with its usage in tracking the time in the historical sense to to track to separate to measure the chronological events it was never meant for that but that is where somebody has in our tradition has made a mess and the mess has continued for a very long time i don't know how long is that but let me quickly mention one more theoretical concept think of this the dashavatar of a vishnu matsya kurma varahan rusiha vaman parshuram ram krishna and so on you can think of this metaphorically as uh, you can think of this as basically a uh, uh, a a metaphor for for the evolution okay you can think of this as a metaphor for evolution and the last one which is when we start tracking the historical events it is the panchang and the lunisolar calendar that is we use for a very short term like the moon's motion and the sun sun's motion the seasons then the years and we also need some reference point and therefore we have some arbitrary reference points such as say uh, vikram samvat or uh, shalivahan samvat okay and saptarshi calendar and there are many different other calendars okay and here what i am suggesting going forward that what we should do is find if if we can find a objective reference point and i like to assert that the uh, the epoch of mahabharata the mahabharata war occurring in 55 61 bc based on a super rich evidence of the mahabharata text and now the corroborating evidence coming from other disciplines of science provides a wonderful point that really works as a nice sheet anchor for our chronology so we can start talking the events that happened after the mahabharat war as mahabharat samvat and the year okay where so today right now we can call mahabharat samvat 7581 for example 
uh, if we want to go before Mahabharat Samvat, we can use the concept before Mahabharat Samvat, like BMS, and go back from that 5561 BCE. All right. But that's not the subject again today. But I just want to, wanted to briefly mention that. Now, quickly, for a chronological purposes, to understand the events going uh, that's going to occur in going in going forward in the future, but also to understand the events in the past, uh, we need these three things. We need a reliable moment via moving objects, a reference frame to track the moment of moving objects, and a reference starting point. For example, if you are checking into a, a hotel room at the reception, many times you will see these clocks behind the reception. Okay, and it will state the time for those locations, like say New York, London, Tokyo, etc., and exactly what is the time there. Guess what? To know this, those three references that I refer to are there in it. Reliable moment via moving objects. What are those? The short arm and the long arm. A reliable frame to track the moment of moving objects. What do we have? This 360 degrees are first divided into 12 parts and they are further subdivided into minutes and in principle they can be divided into the seconds if one wants to but that is done through the second arm and then the third point very important point is a reference starting point and in this case it is done using the name of the city so that's kind of think of this as a time zone new york london tokyo uh, if we have to use this uh, not just the clock a daily clock but for a broader chronological scale well, we already have a ready-made scale, which is our panchang. And just let's use that metaphor of a wall clock here. What do we have? We have a short arm which moves slowly. Is that sun going around the earth as seen from the earth, making a complete round in 365 days approximately. We have a long arm which kind of moves faster. What is that? The moon. Okay, the moon is going to complete one circle in 27 days from one star to the same star again. And if you look at from one phase to the same phase again, it's going to be 29.53 days. So we have a faster moving object, that's the moon. So that they think of this as they working like a short arm and a long arm of the wall clock. Now, wall clock also needs that reference of 360 degrees divided into certain compartments. Well. Here we have 360 degree circle divided into the nakshatra reference system of 27 nakshatras. And one more thing we need is a solid reference point as a, ref as a reference point to track longer periods, okay, beyond one year. And of course, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention is the seasons. We have the seasons, we also have the cardinal points, okay. Very, very perfect system. And Ancient Indian astronomy is so precise, is so sophisticated that it has figured out how to track this time. Now it needs a reference point. And as I said, the reference point comes in the form that is what I recommend. Uh, I encourage everyone to think over it is the, the epoch of Mahabharata war that occurred in 5561 BCE. What is the beauty of it? Well, everyone knows Mahabharata. We have a well-preserved text of Mahabharata. And the, if somebody forgets this, but somebody still has access to scientific knowledge, logical reasoning, uh, common sense, and uh, empirical, and the, the knowledge of darshanas, they will always able to recover this number of 5561 BCE. They may not call it 5561 BCE, they may call by a different number, but they will exactly able to recover how long ago this Mahabharata happened with respect to their time, whatever that time is. That's the beauty of the rich evidence that has been embedded by Vyasadeva in the Mahabharata.